Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'll be turning some e-waste into something really, really cool. This is an iPhone 10 that is completely unfixable. From the outside, it looks like a working phone, but inside is something truly horrifying, as we'll soon find out. With the help of x Art, we're going to take this phone and display it in an exploded view, allowing all of the internals that would otherwise be hidden to be showcased. Whether you like or dislike Apple, they do know how to make the internals of the device look really good. This is something most people don't see, but using a broken phone, we can display some of that beauty. x Art sent over their DIY kit for me to assemble. These kits are available for most iPhone models, as well as some Game Boys and Apple Watches. Mine fell apart during shipping, but thankfully nothing was damaged. It's made from chipboard and plastic, so not the highest quality. The frame also looks like it's been spray painted, at least on the back section. The thing that brings this project together is the template. This is where we'll lay out the parts of the phone. I've seen some pictures on what it should look like when assembled, and I must say, it looks spectacular. They did send over this frame and phone to me free of charge, but they're not paying me to produce this video and had no input into its production. Because they sent me a phone of unknown condition, I wanted to see if it worked or if I could fix it. They told me they sourced it from a second-hand phone supplier in China. When plugged in, it shows no signs of life and only draws a few milliamps before jumping to about half an amp every few seconds. We'll open up the device and have a look at what could be causing the issue. After all, you don't want to sacrifice a phone that could be repaired. After the two pentalobe screws are removed, I'll open up the display using a suction cup and some plastic picks. No heat was required as it's been opened and not resealed properly. But that's the least of this phone's issues. At a first glance, the earpiece isn't screwed into the display, it's missing screws, the camera bracket is missing, the battery isn't adhered properly, and on top of all that, the phone is all rusted and corroded from salt water damage. It's amazing how good the phone looks from the outside. It fooled me. I had no idea what was hiding inside. So there's definitely no harm in turning this phone into a bit of art. I'll continue disassembling this phone and removing the necessary parts we need for the template. Because I know people will ask, I'm going to attach a working battery and see if that changes anything. This battery was held in not using Apple's original stretch adhesive. Instead, it was glued in place using super glue. That is a really poor choice. But given the rest of the condition of this phone, this may have been just to sell the phone onto somebody else. Of course, with a new battery attached, I'm not surprised to see that it doesn't turn on. One thing I have noticed is the logic board has no signs of corrosion, which says to me that this isn't the original board to this frame, which brings up more questions than it answers. Once we get it out, we'll be able to take a closer look at it and see if anything's abnormal. Taking out the SIM tray and the two screws that still remain in the board, it can be pulled free from the phone. Things only get worse. Just look at the condition of this logic board. On the top section, I could see what appeared to be solder balls. Peeling back the graphite tape, I was correct. The NAND flash storage is long gone. It's apparent someone has attempted data recovery on this board, but that doesn't answer why it's been installed in a saltwater damaged housing. My guess is someone got all the junk parts they could find and assembled it into a phone that looks perfect from the outside, like something someone could fix. But that's just my guess. I don't know because I didn't buy it. While I need a non-repairable phone for this project, this one was a little too far gone. The salt water damage has rusted and seized a majority of the screws, making it impossible for me to remove some of the parts I need. I tried everything I could think of, including WD-40, and I think it's fair to say if that can't get them out, nothing will. And without access to a drill, I had to come up with an alternative plan. For some, I can just rip them out, but others will need to be sourced from another donor phone. As I'll be sacrificing the OLED display to be able to install it into the frame, I wanted to check that it wasn't a good screen. I got out an iPhone XS with a logic board fault that causes no touch to be able to test out this screen. To no surprise, it's broken. So it's time to break it some more. I'll need it to be as flat as possible so it'll have enough surface area to be glued down. I'll remove the outer frame, the cables and the 3D touch layer. It's removed as the graphite paper is just too weak to be able to glue to. If you've ever wondered how Apple's 3D touch works, 
Here's what measures the pressure from your finger. Say hello to the future of this iPhone 10, a work of art. This template in itself is really well designed and I'm sure it took a lot of effort, but it's not without some design issues, which I'll get to. To stick everything down, I'll be using B6000 adhesive, which they sent me along with the frame. The first thing I'll stick down is the OLED display panel. I'll run an adhesive border around the perimeter as well as a little bit in the middle to hopefully keep it in place whilst it's in the frame. Once aligned correctly, it can be pressed down into place. Beside it should go the mute switch and a display bracket. As I couldn't remove them from my rusty housing, I took them from a parts iPhone XS. Once removed, I could glue it into place. The iPhone X and XS are very similar. While this is only supposed to be for an iPhone X, I was able to get some XS parts to work. Another big reason you want to do this with a parts phone is that you'll be cutting some pieces to make them fit. The Face ID module is a paired component and won't work if it's replaced. After telling people to look after this part, it feels wrong to be cutting off its cables. But after all, you have to remember this phone is e-waste, so it doesn't matter. For the earpiece, I can take a much more civilized approach by simply unsoldering the two connections. Using my microscope, some flux, some solder and a soldering iron, I was able to remove that cable without damaging it. This was really just for practice as you could rip this off yourself if you needed to. After the parts have been prepared, I can glue them into place. While the glue I'm using will dry clear, it's still noticeable if it seeps out the sides of the part. So I'll do my best to clean it up before it dries. Another part I'll take from my donor iPhone XS is its Taptic Engine and Speaker, both of which I couldn't remove from the iPhone X that we're framing, because the screws are rusted in place. While this hasn't been ideal, it demonstrates not every broken phone can be salvaged for a project like this. Water damage is incredibly hard to gauge without opening and looking at a device. While most would work for a project like this, salt water causes a much more severe reaction, which means there's more rust and less chance of even being able to disassemble it, like what we've discovered today. The first issue with this template is the way the logic board is displayed. You're required to separate the two halves of the board. This is fine if you have the equipment, but most DIY repairers likely won't as things like a hot air rework station are still quite specialized and costly. This means you'd be left with an empty section on the template that would just look out of place. As I had a hot air rework station, I managed to separate mine, but there was something strange. There was no A11 CPU, no EEPROM and no NAND. These three chips are required for data recovery on an iPhone. So it appears these were removed and transferred to another donor logic board. That's great for the customer, but not for me, as the whole point of this project is to see the inner workings. So mine will be incomplete. As it turns out, the two layers of the board had been reattached after the data recovery using super glue. So in separating it, all I did was melt the glue, not solder. There is also a lot of solder paste left floating around inside, which I cleaned up as best I could. It's a massive shame that these chips are missing, as this is the whole reason the board is separated on the template, to show off the A11 CPU. I will need to find a replacement board, but for now, this one will do. With the logic board in place, this frame is starting to come together, but there's still a few other components to go in. For the battery, it'll need to be separated into two halves. I wouldn't advise doing this if the battery has any kind of charge in it, as it could short out. Thankfully, this battery is long since dead, so I can remove any excess wires and clean up the batteries as necessary before we attach them onto the template. For the back housing, I had to get a bit creative, as there was no assembly guide. I got some packing foam and cut it down to fill the hollow inside the housing. This will give surface area to the glue so that it can be attached. Once applied, the housing can be flipped over and stuck down into position. There is only a few more things left to attach before we can see the end result. This includes the lightning connector, 
volume buttons, and the microphone. In the assembled version they sell on their website, this piece is actually a plastic bracket that's used for the microphone and not the mic itself. For my DIY version, I'll actually glue the real microphone here. There is one piece I wasn't able to attach, and that's an antenna that should be above the housing. It's different on the 10s and didn't fit the template, so for the time being, I've left it off. Before installing our artwork into the frame, I'll need to clean off any dust and fingerprints before removing the plastic protective film. Once done, I can place the card with our iPhone 10 on it into the frame before attaching the back panel. It has several clips that slide under an edge that need to be put into position to prevent everything from falling apart. The last thing left to do is remove the plastic protective film from the front of the frame. So this is it. An iPhone 10 that was complete and utter e-waste has been revitalized into a work of art. I did something similar with an iPhone 5 a few years back, but it didn't look quite as good. The template really makes this look like a professional job. This DIY kit costs 70 US dollars, a price hard to justify when the template is available for download for free on their website. So for $70, all you're really buying is a frame and a print of the free template. The frame isn't anything special, with a plastic lens and a chipboard construction, it's really not worth the price. The result is spectacular, but I feel the frame needs to be of higher quality and the template needs a few minor adjustments. They do sell pre-assembled units, which I think are a much better value. After all, the hard work is done for you and you actually get something for your money. Regardless, this will make a really nice addition to the studio when I find a place to put it. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.